Welcome back. You've probably heard the term OCD, but as the acronym has become part of our cultural lexicon, myths about the disorder have proliferated. Here to help us parse what's true is Paul Peterson. He is the CEO of the OCD and Anxiety Treatment Center. First of all, people do throw around that term, oh, I'm OCD about my books. They have to be lined up, but that's not really OCD. So can we start with yeah. a working definition? Right, OCD is where somebody has an intrusive thought and it, it spikes an enormous amount of anxiety and fear and worry through them. And then they want to create certainty to make sure that that thing couldn't be true or isn't gonna happen or hasn't happened. And so then they, by doing that, they get this reduction of symptoms by, by, by finding knowing that they didn't do it. So we've heard of people who have obsessive behaviors, washing hands, locking, checking to see if the oven's yeah. on and off. Do, do your patients have those kind of um, symptoms? Yeah, that's one of those misconceptions. I would say about five to 10% of the people we work with have those. And then it's all of these other ones like superstitious OCD or harm OCD. Or, I mean, there's so many different types that people just don't know exist. So let's talk about those intrusive thoughts because as you mentioned, that's the most common. And you know, we think of people locking and unlocking, but 95% of people with OCD, they're just having thoughts that intrude on their yeah. day that are scary. Um, it, it, you have to do this or something bad's gonna happen. How do you know if you're suffering from a disorder versus like you're just having the occasional yeah. intrusive thought? Yeah, well it's, it really comes down to the feeling. A lot of people, everybody has intrusive thoughts, but when you have that intrusive thought, zero to 10, 10 being the highest level of distress, zero not at all, there may be a, a six or a seven, and it lasts for seconds. But when there's a, a problem, it la it's super high, and it can last for hours, days, even weeks. And, you know, we all have anxiety. That's part of the human condition. You might have even had anxiety about coming onto the show talking sure, about anxiety. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> However, for some people, it really does become something that affects their quality of life because it's not situational. I'm anxious because I'm doing something scary. It, yeah. it, it just starts to, uh, people's brains perseverate. <laughs> Right, that's right, and they, 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 they lose their life because they, they focus so much on this than, than what really matters. And what really matters is living life, right? And I don't know what I did or what I could have done or what will happen, I just want to enjoy today. And all of us do. Yeah. So you've been working with patients and you've got some treatment plans that have been very effective for both OCD yes. and anxiety. Yeah, we actually, our treatment center, we are in the, the high, have the highest reduction of symptoms in the whole nation. It's, we have such a sophisticated programming that it actually gives us the results that we want. And we use this process called exposure and response prevention or exposure therapy. And it's about changing that, the, how the brain reacts to the scary things that are, are, that are coming in it. So let's just say I'm afraid of spiders. Right. I have anxiety surrounding it. Now I can't leave my house because there might be a spider. I can't sure. get out of bed. There could be a spider <laughs> in my room. So exposure therapy, from my understanding, is you would start with there's a spider 10 yards away. There's a spider yeah. 10 feet away. There's a spider next to you. Now it's in your hand. Sure. And little by little you get used to it. You're exposed to the thing yeah. that's making you anxious. Yeah, you know, the, the one who cares the least has the most power. Right, so the less I care about things, the more power I have over them. And so if I, if I run away from the spider, then the next time I see a spider, my brain knows exactly what to do and it's gonna run away even more and get to a point where I don't even go to places where there are spiders. I need to start to face my fear, make my monster my friend. I love that. What kinds of fears are you seeing? I mean, I just came up with spider because they're sure. scary. <laughs> sure, it could be fear that I might hurt my, fa my family member. I might do something wrong. I might disappoint Heavenly Father. I might uh, do something ter terrible to a child or to, uh, I mean, it just can be all things. People focus on that contamination, but you know there's contamination of, of a city. They can be worried about even what could come from that city. It's more of gross instead of contamination. So there's a lot of types of yes. anxiety, a lot of types of OCD, but you've been very successful. So if somebody's watching and they think, I think my level of anxiety is a little higher than usual or I'm yeah. not able to go about my daily life because I have to do, uh, you know, I have to wash my hand or I'm having these intrusive thoughts. You want people to know that there are some solutions and treatments yes. that have been working. Yes, they, the, treatment works if you get the right treatment. Uh, the IOCDF 
uh, had a study that said that between 14 to 17 years it takes to find a therapist that can actually help you. So when you are looking for a therapist, you have to find somebody who's truly specialized in OCD and or anxiety. Thank you Very so much, and, and that's you. So if, if this is something you're dealing with, make sure to find somebody who specializes. Thank you for being here.